July 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 33 and 34 from the Old Testament. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 55 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and committed the same horrible sins practiced by the nations whom the Lord drove out ahead of the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He set up altars for the balls and made Asherah poles. He bowed down to all the stars in the sky and worshipped them. He built altars in the Lord's temple about which the Lord had said, Jerusalem will be my permanent home. In the two courtyards of the Lord's temple he built altars for all the stars in the sky. He passed his sons through the fire in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and practiced divination, omen reading, and sorcery. He set up a ritual pit to conjure up underworld spirits and appointed magicians to supervise it. He did a great amount of evil in the sight of the Lord and angered him. He put an idolatrous image he had made in God's temple, about which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, This temple in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will be my permanent home. I will not make Israel again leave the land I gave to their ancestors, provided that they carefully obey all I commanded them, the whole law, the rules and regulations given to Moses. But Manasseh misled the people of Judah and the residents of Jerusalem so that they sinned more than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed ahead of the Israelites. The Lord confronted Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought against them the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria. They seized Manasseh, put hooks in his nose, bound him with bronze chains, and carried him away to Babylon. In his pain, Manasseh asked the Lord his God for mercy and truly humbled himself before the God of his ancestors. When he prayed to the Lord, the Lord responded to him and answered favorably his cry for mercy. The Lord brought him back to Jerusalem to his kingdom. Then Manasseh realized that the Lord is the true God. After this, Manasseh built up the outer wall of the city of David on the west side of the Gihon in the valley to the entrance of the fish gate and all around the terrace. He made it much higher. He placed army officers in all the fortified cities in Judah. He removed the foreign gods and images from the Lord's temple and all the altars he had built on the hill of the Lord's temple and in Jerusalem. He threw them outside the city. He erected the altar of the Lord and offered on it peace offerings and thank offerings. He told the people of Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. The people continued to offer sacrifices at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. The rest of the events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayer to his God and the words the prophet spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, are recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. The annals of the prophets include his prayer, give an account of how the Lord responded to it, record all his sins and unfaithful acts, and identify the sites where he built high places and erected Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself. Manasseh passed away and was buried in his palace. His son, Amon, replaced him as king. Amon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned for two years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, just like his father Manasseh had done. He offered sacrifices to all the idols his father Manasseh had made and worshipped them. He did not humble himself before the Lord as his father Manasseh had done, Amon was guilty of great sin. His servants conspired against him and killed him in his palace. The people of the land executed all who had conspired against King Amon, and they made his son, Josiah, king in his place. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. He did what the Lord approved and followed in his ancestor David's footsteps. He did not deviate to the right or the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his ancestor David. In his twelfth year, he began ridding Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, Asherah poles, idols, and images. 
He ordered the altars of the balls to be torn down and broke the incense altars that were above them. He smashed the Asherah poles, idols, and images, crushed them up, and sprinkled the dust over the tombs of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the pagan priest on their altars. He purified Judah and Jerusalem. In the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali and in the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and Asherah poles, demolished the idols and smashed all the incense altars throughout the land of Israel. Then he returned to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of his reign, he continued his policy of purifying the land and the temple. He sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, Maaseah, the city official, and Joah, son of Johaz, the secretary, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They went to Hilkiah, the high priest, and gave him the silver that had been brought to God's temple. The Levites, who guarded the door, had collected it from the people of Manasseh and Ephraim, and from all who were left in Israel, as well as from all the people of Judah and Benjamin and the residents of Jerusalem. They handed it over to the construction foremen assigned to the Lord's temple. They, in turn, paid the temple workers to restore and repair it. They gave money to the craftsmen and builders to buy chiseled stone and wood for the braces and rafters of the buildings that the kings of Judah had allowed to fall into disrepair. The men worked faithfully. Their supervisors were Jahath and Obadiah, Levites descended from Mirai, as well as Zechariah and Meshulam, descendants of Kohath. The Levites, all of whom were skilled musicians, supervised the laborers, and all the foremen on their various jobs. Some of the Levites were scribes, officials, and guards. When they took out the silver that had been brought to the Lord's temple, Hilkiah the priest found the lost scroll the Lord had given to Moses. Hilkiah informed Saphan, the scribe, I found the lost scroll in the Lord's temple. Hilkiah gave the scroll to Saphan. Saphan brought the scroll to the king and reported, your servants are doing everything assigned to them. They melted down the silver in the Lord's temple and handed it over to the supervisors of the construction foreman. Then Saif and the scribe told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a scroll. Saif and read it out loud before the king. When the king heard the words of the lost scroll, he tore his clothes. The king ordered Hilkiah, Ahikam, son of Saphon, Abdon, son of Micah, Saphon, the scribe, and Azaziah, the king's servant, go seek an oracle from the Lord for me and those who remain in Israel and Judah. Find out about the words of this scroll that has been discovered, for the Lord's fury has been ignited against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the word of the Lord by doing all that this scroll instructs. So Hilkiah and the others sent by the king went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, son of Takhath, the son of Hasra, the supervisor of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem, in the Mishnah district. They stated their business, and she said to them, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Say this to the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am about to bring disaster on this place and its residents the details of which are recorded in the scroll which they read before the king of Judah. This will happen because they have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to other gods, angering me with all the idols they have made. My anger will ignite against this place and will not be extinguished. Say this to the king of Judah, who sent you to seek an oracle from the Lord. This is what the Lord God of Israel says concerning the words you have heard. You displayed a sensitive spirit and humbled yourself before God when you heard his words concerning this place and its residents. You humbled yourself before me, tore your clothes and wept before me, and I have heard you, says the Lord. Therefore, I will allow you to die and be buried in peace. You will not have to witness all the disaster I will bring on this place and its residents. Then they reported back to the king. The king summoned all the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the Lord's temple, accompanied by all the people of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, 
the priest, and the Levites. All the people were there from the oldest to the youngest. He read aloud all the words of the scroll of the covenant that had been discovered in the Lord's temple. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant before the Lord, agreeing to follow the Lord and to obey his commandments, laws, and rules with all his heart and being by carrying out the terms of this covenant recorded on this scroll. He made all who were in Jerusalem and Benjamin agree to it. The residents of Jerusalem acted in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the areas belonging to the Israelites and encouraged all who were in Israel to worship the Lord their God. Throughout the rest of his reign, they did not turn aside from following the Lord God of their ancestors. God, I, I thank you for the bad things in my life. I always tell people that and they're always a little bit baffled until I explain that the things of this world that people say are bad really have never, if I go back and look at my life, have truly been bad. They've always been situations that have drawn me closer to you, God, deeper in this relationship. Uh, maybe it's a situation where I'm able to give a, a testimony to somebody or help somebody else with their walk with you. Our version of what is bad is rarely your version of what is bad. I think of all of the things that you took away in my life, intentionally took away from my life, jobs and money and a so-called sense of security with a house. You took away relationships. You took away people all in a full-fledged effort for me to pay attention to you, to be obedient to you, to only be able to rely on you. Um, and throughout that process, a lot of people would say, oh, look at all the bad things happening to Janelle right now. And looking back, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me ever in my entire life was you just finally putting your foot down and saying, I'm tired of this. We're done. You're now going to understand what it means to be fully reliant on me and I see the same thing with Manasseh who couldn't be further away from you he's even praying to the stars much less the other gods but he's praying to the stars and he's turning everything that's sacred of yours God into an idol worshiping fest for him and all of the people around him but into his life you put pain into his life there was something bad that happened um, you brought against him the king of Assyria and knowing full well what the king of Assyria was going to do, not only take him prisoner, but put hooks in his nose, put chains around him and, and cart him off to Babylon. A lot of people would say that something bad had happened to Manasseh, yet what happens next is absolutely incredible. Of all the things he could turn to, all of his many, many, many idols, the stars in the heavens, he doesn't. He turns to you. His heart had been humbled by that experience that you had put into his life. We know that you intentionally brought that upon him. And his heart turns to you. And, and once his heart turns to you, his his life turns to you. And then the people around him get to see the, the incredible sovereignty of who you are, your grace, your mercy, your power. And other people's lives start to change as well. So God, help us remember that in those times where maybe it's a bad day that's happening or something that we think is really major and, and catastrophic, that you have promised us that you will make all those things good for what you need them to be. You needed Manasseh as a leader to have a heart that was of yours. And, and through a so-called bad process, you brought him into obedience with you, into a relationship with you. And then it becomes part of his testimony. So God, I just pray for everyone today who's going through something bad or something hard or something hurtful or something painful, uh, that they come to you, God, that instead of trying to hold on to that pain or hurt or that label of, gosh, I'm so angry at what has happened to me, and maybe they're even angry at you, God, that instead they will just come to you and, and just say out of, out of pure humbleness, I don't know what this looks like. I know I'm sad, depressed, angry, hurt, frustrated, whatever any of those feelings are. And God, I just lay this at your feet 
and you, and please do with it what you need to be done that your will be done in this situation and God I know because every time in my life I have done that you have made it good and you have given me a front row seat to to see what that good is that you have done and that doesn't mean that we always get to see the good but it's such a blessing to see something that we call bad and you know full well that it will turn out for good for your glory through your grace and mercy in your son's name I pray amen Thank you.